So as a, you, you've obviously have uh, become comfortable in your sensei uh, uniform and your, you, the, the shoes you wear now are different from, you know, 10 years ago when you were heavy on the competition circuit. And yeah. what are your thoughts on the importance of teaching judo to improve your game and become a good judo player in general? Hmm. That's very good. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, I like to teach to be, you know, for like the holistic side, right? Not just specifically to competition. If you're only teaching to one specific rule set, you miss out on a lot, you know, and a lot of the adults who come in, like my primary demographic to grow the adult side of the business <clears throat> is people who come in after work. So naturally, who are those people? Those people are going to have certain questions that aren't going to be Olympic specific judo, right? right. They're be like, why, how is this going to work on the street? I want to get in shape. I want to make friends and it has to kind of cater to that. And then as they're, we're meeting those needs, it's like how to get them interested in grappling period. Why is this so much interesting? Right? So interesting. Right. So a lot of these people have an idea because they watch UFC or they have done Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So it's like, I want to make all the information that they receive from me at my club relevant hmm. to what they already sort of know. Sure. Right. So for now, for only doing turnovers that are specific to judo competition, it, they, I'm going to lose a lot of people. Sure. Why do I have to turn this person over? If I was in a street fight, wouldn't I just punch him in the, the face? Right? Like these questions are questions that most judoka won't have, but the average adult practitioner will have. So I preemptively address those things. Right? And I teach a lot of the stuff that's sort of cross available across all the different arts. And then I have sort of a martial implication side that I kind of touch upon. And I try to keep all my instructions on the three minutes, right? Because you don't want to be you know, the sensei syndrome, I mean, you can stand there talking for 20 minutes about something, giving a dissertation about the history of a soda, you lose 90% of the people, right? Yeah, So it's like, I want most people total engagement, people are doing drilling, practicing, okay, bring it in, here's a three minute spiel, right? And then in that spiel, I'll teach something, and I'll give the martial implications, and all those little soft points to make sure everyone meets their needs, and then go try it. And then maybe right. I'll bring them back for another three minutes. So I'm only teaching five to seven minutes per class. The rest of yeah. it is like doing, right? Sure. So that's sort of my methodology that I had a lot of success with, with adults, because now all of a sudden you're getting into this level of like, this is fun. And it's not just memorizing techniques. What technique is this? What technique is that? You know, why it works, how it works. Like, what are the implications? Like, what about this? What about that? And now they could have a conversation amongst each other. Like why sure. this works, why that? And the precursor skills and all this stuff. And, you know, we have a lot of, random grapplers in the room yeah right? it turns into a social situation which is one of the main reasons people come to judo clubs in the first place because they want to make 100 percent. yeah you nailed it you nailed it yeah you nailed it it's got to be a friendly environment you know and you really have to be on top of that culture building because naturally when you have a hierarchical society like judo with the belts it's like hey i'm your senpai hey you can't stand there hey you gotta bow in and bow to me hey i'm better than you because i'm wearing this belt and i've been here long. it's just naturally embedded Right. And Japan right. is a very hierarchical society. So right. if you take a culture like the United States, you know, and you dump those people in a room that has that infrastructure, it's going to cause problems. Right. Agree. So <laughs> we like, you know, I try my best to like stay on top of it and try and, you know, shape the room in a way that's like friendly and accommodating everybody, you know, because that's the most important part. Right. People want to come and make friends and feel, you know, they're just getting reamed out at work. You know, their boss is yelling at right. them. Or even right. if they are the boss, their team is not doing the right thing. They're frustrated. They're annoyed. You know, they come to judo to have a good time. Yeah. 